this is the structure of uh, HP data frame. And the main variable in this data frame is the value of the house. Value of the house is a numeric variable. It has the different values. How many values it has? It has 5,802 values, right? It has 5,802 values. Now, we want to find out the summary statistics of this variable. We just write down summary. In the bracket, you have to mention the name of the variable for which you want to compute the summary statistics. So the variable HP dollar sign and the total value. Now run this command. So you can see that summary statistics is mentioned in the bottom of the screen. This summary statistics indicate that you can see the summary statistics. The minimum value of the house is 105. The first quartile is 325. The second quartile, which is median, it is 375. And the mean house price is 392. And the third quartile, which is Q3, is this. And the maximum price is uh, 1,217. So this is called summary statistics, right? In the summary statistics, you will get the six values, one, two, three, four, five, and six. These six values are mentioned here. And if you want to find out these elements separately, to just find, calculate the mean of this value variable, total value variable. Just write down this here. So you, you, will, you will get the mean, exactly the same mean as you are getting by the summary statistics. You are getting the same mean here, uh, 392.68. So this is the way to find out the summary statistics of the variable. Now I am going to mention here how to find out a random sample of uh, this entire data frame. HP. HP has 5,802 observations and I want to store 70% of the observation in a training data set and remaining 30% of the observations in a test, testing data set because in, uh, in machine learning, we have to split the data file into two, these two segments, the training data and the testing data. So how can we split the data file here? Uh, we are mentioning the code uh, for uh, representing. Now you can see the code here, random sample, and which variable I want to get the random sample, this is HP. So just mention the variable HP here. This is a command which is named as sample command. So I want to sample the file into the two segments. So how many segments there are? Two segments. How many rows there are? The number of rows in the variable HP. These are the 5,800 and something rows. Replace is equal to true ka matlab hai uh, for with replacement. By sampling with replacement, I want to do. If uh, I put replace is equal to false, this common, it means that the sampling without replacement will be performed. Probability. Probability means what? 80% observations in one segment and remaining 20% observation into the another segment. So this command will do the two segments. Now, the first segment of HP will be stored in test data set and the remaining second size segment of the HP will be stored in a training. So these three commands collectively do what? These three commands collectively do in the HP file, two segments were created 
randomly. 80% observations will be stored in segment number one. Remaining 20% will be stored in segment number two. These two segments will be stored in the two separate data frames called test and train. Just I am executing this command. You have uh, three data. Now you have a uh, three data sets. One is HP. Second is train. Third is test. These are the three data frames now we have. Now you can see the structure of these three data frames. STR of HP. So it will mention the 8000 and something rows. Then STR of training data sets. It will have the same number of columns with the different number of rows. Then the structure of last data, data frame. So these three are the data frames. Two are created new and one is the old. Now you can see that in the output window structure HP. In the structure HP you have 5802 rows with 14 variables. Means it is the complete data set. Now a structure of training data set how many observations it has? It has uh, 1,119 1, observations with 14 variables. It means all of the 14 variables are there, but only 1,119 rows of the HP data frame is stored in a training data set. Now the structure of the testing data set, it has 4,683 observations with all of the so it, these are the three segments. For what purpose you will use the training data set? The training data set will be stored, will be used, used for creating model. And for what purpose the test data set is used? It is used for testing the accuracy of model the so model building and model accuracy these are the two different uh, elements of data modeling so i am just putting these two command as uh, these two lines as a help line or a comment line the two comment lines i have added uh, this command will used This structure will be used for creating the model and this structure will be used for testing the model. Any question from uh, your side, you can, uh, you can ask. Now coming to the uh, first graph, which we want to build for the total value function. So the first graph is uh, histogram. Histogram of HP dollar and total value. So this is the histogram and this histogram is indicating that it is a right skewed graph. Mean it is not normal. Normal the shape should be like it. If the shape is like this we call it as a normal distribution. If the shape is like this we call it as a right skewed distribution. So this distribution is a uh, is a right distribution and if we want to make the distribution normal so there is a method which is called transformation. So transformation is a method which is used for for making this distribution as a normal distribution. So I am just uh, using as a log transformation here. In a log transformation, I am creating a new variable log value. Log value is a new variable in which I want to store the logarithms of uh, the variable HP dollar total value. So what we are doing the very actual variable is HP dollar total value. This is one variable which is a right skewed variable. 
and we want to transform this is uh, like a normal distribution. I am taking the log of this variable. The log of every value will be taken and uh, these values will be stored in a new variable named as LG value, log value. You can, you can name this variable as you wish. I am using LG value. You can use any other variable. Uh, for example, LG house price or LG total price, whatever name you can use here. Now click on this uh, command and we are executing it. The log will be computed. Um, now I am making the histogram of the new variable. HP, sorry, uh, histogram of LG value. Now you can see that the graph is now normal. So the method which I used, this method is called transformation. So what the transformation does, if your, if your data is not normal, by using the log transformation, you can try to make it normal as I did here. The actual variable, which is uh, HP total prices, the histogram of this variable is not normal. It is a right skewed variable, but uh, I took the logarithm of all values of uh, the total value function uh, variable, and then a histogram is made again. This histogram, we can see that this histogram is a, is a normally distributed variable. So the transformation do what? Transformation make the variable normal. One, one, uh, one output of the transformation is to make it normal. Another output of the transformation is to make the variable homocedastic. We will discuss the homocedasticity in, in the next lectures. Today we are not discussing the homocedasticity. Uh, now uh, we have uh, to draw the another plot which is called QQ norm. QQ norm is a function which checks the normality of any variable. The histogram is also used for the for checking the normality, but QQ norm is also a function uh, which is uh, used for checking the normality. So I am making the QQ plot graph of both of the variable before transformation and after transformation. Before transformation, it was uh, total value and after transformation is the name of the variable is uh, LG value. Now I am making the two QQ norm plots. Now you can see these two plots. This was the first plot. This is the second plot. What is the difference you are observing in these two plots? The difference is the first plot is made on the actual variable. The second plot is made on the logarithm values of the same variable. You can see that the second graph is quite linear as compared to the previous one, which is slightly curved. So this curvature is representing a non-normality, while the straight line in this graph is mentioning the normality, right? So this is not normal, but uh, it is a straight line or approximately a straight line, so we can call it as a normal. Now we are considering the agenda point number two, how to take the help of any command. Suppose I want to find out the help of the QQ norm function. So just write down help and QQ norm and press enter. So you can see that the help will be shown on the uh, help window. You can extend or stretch the help window to see the complete detailed help. 
QQ norm, and you have to mention here uh, one variable which is a quantitative variable. Now, what this does, this variable, if if the graph output is linear, indicating uh, normality. If the graph is not linear, indicating non-normality, right? So this is the way how to take the help of any function. Uh, similarly, the next uh, agenda point of the meeting is uh, creating the data frame, finding the summary statistics, basic visualizations, making subsets. I am now just uh, mentioning you how to create my own data set. Suppose I am showing you one data set and we will enter the complete data here into R and then we will compute the few summary statistics for that. Means the data is not recorded in a, in a file. If the data is already recorded in a CSV file, then read.csv command can be used to download the data into R. But if your data file is not there and your data is a raw data and you have a raw data on your script or your uh, pay, paper of uh, uh, piece of paper, then how to type the data from piece of paper into R, we are doing it here. This is the file. This is the question that we want to put into the R and, and then compute uh, summary statistics of it. So just uh, mentioning the screen, the split screen here. The second screen is a screen of R. Now you can see the both of the screens. Which screen are you? Are you watching both the screens or on any one screen? In your display, the two screens are there or only one screen? One screen. It's just a word. It's a word only. Okay. Uh, these are the these are the contents of the of the data which we want to enter into R. So uh, just take a photograph of this because uh, from that photograph we will enter the data into the R. And I will remove the word screen from here. Now this is the R screen, and we have to. We have to create the two variables. The first variable is in the column number one, which is a mileage variable. So I am mentioning the mileage variable as the variable X. In the variable X, you want to keep the data into the variable X. So your values are what? 36.7 comma 35.8 comma and so on, all of the values are to be entered here. Uh, the one column is created and the name of the column is X. If you want to see all of the values in the variable X, just run these command, your variable X is created. Now, if you want to find out, uh, for example, you want to run a t-test on that, on that variable. So just click t dot test. The t dot test is a command. Uh, you have to enter only one variable. This variable is variable x. So one sample t test can be performed. One sample t test can be performed by this command t dot test. So you can see that the, you can see the outputs. What the output is? Your output is. Uh, this is your t-score. How your t-score is computed? The formula of computing the t-score is simple one, one variable t-score is x bar minus mu sigma. Instead of sigma, we have s upon n root. 
because I did not give any value of mu, so it is a by default it is assumed as zero. So now the mean of the variable x is used. The mean of this variable is by directly computed by the software itself, and the standard deviation is also computed by the software itself, and divided by n root. N root is uh, how many observations are there? Ten observations are there. The degree of freedom is mentioned here as nine. You can see the p-value. How much is the p-value? P-value is zero point zero 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 six times zeros. Six times zero, then one zero seven, and the p-value is very small, indicating that H naught is rejected. If the H naught is rejected, then your alternate hypothesis is true. So T dot test command is a very simple command by which you can run the entire T test. Entire T test can be run by this command. Now, if you want to do a pair T test, if you want to do a pair T test, then another variable, which is X2, which was given into the same question, which I was mentioning, uh, then your variable X2 will also be stored into the second variable and we will perform a pair T test there. Now the both of the columns are entered. You have to calculate the differences. So your formula of calculating the differences is D is equal to X minus Y. So what it will do, it will subtract 36.2 from 36.7 and the difference is stored in the variable D. Again, 35.8 minus 35.7, the difference is stored in D and so on. For all of the values, the differences are computed. So these are the 10 values. Then the 10 differences are computed and all of these 10 differences are stored in the variable D. Now we want to calculate uh, the observations in D are what? Observation in D. Now pair D tests are to be applied. What is the formula of the pair T test? Formula of pair T test is T is equal to X bar minus mu D which is assumed to be zero, divided by standard deviation of the differences, divided by n root. So what is to be do? You have to calculate the mean of D, you have to calculate the standard deviation of D, and then T score are to be computed. Instead of doing all of these, I am just placing, uh, I am just placing one thing, and what is what is that? Just putting t dot test t dot test command for d for d differences test dot t command for differences. Just run this command. You will have the t statistics. This is your t statistics. This is your degree of freedom. This is your p value. Your p value is more than 0 0.05. Therefore, we accept the null hypothesis and conclude that there is no difference in between the two means. What was your initial objective? The mean one is same as the mean two. This was your actual objective. And the null hypothesis is true, indicating that uh, your alternate is false. Uh, final conclusion will be what? Without additive and with additive, there is no significant difference. Means additive does not make any difference into, um, into the distances of the, of the mileage of the cars, right? So this is the end of the second part.